We are back with James Edwards, beat writer on the Pistons for The Athletic. James, you were in the locker room. You were at the Jazz Pistons game. First of all, man, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. Um, as I was telling you earlier, no symptoms yet. It's been eight days since that game, um, eight days since I last talked to Christian. And, uh, yeah, so, so no symptoms. I know it can take up to two weeks for them to kind of set in, but so far, so good. But, I, yeah, no, I'm still quarantining, as you can tell from my appearance. <laughs> Haven't left too much, but, yeah, it, everything's good over here. The Pistons in basketball, really in the NBA, have been at the, at the epicenter of so much of all of this. When, yeah. when you were, I don't know where you were, if you were, but when you were seeing the news come down about Rudy Gobert, the Jazz, the quarantining and everything that night, can you walk me through your thought process, your reaction to everything that was going down in OKC? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. That was on a Wednesday, correct? Yes. So I had just got back. The Pistons played the Jazz Saturday night and then played in New York on Sunday. So I had just got back from New York. I didn't go to Philly for that game on Wednesday. Um, I think I had just landed uh, not too shortly after, like, getting in my car. I saw the text. And, yeah, man, like, my kind of heart stopped. One, I felt bad for for Rudy, and everybody was still kind of learning what having the virus meant, or at least I was, I should say. And um, so, so that crossed my mind. And then the fact that, games were getting stopped and then eventually the league was going to go to a halt it was just kind of all overwhelming and it felt very life or death and then for some people it is life or death and that's why we have to take the precautions we're taking the precautions the nba has taken uh but yeah i, I remember just kind of like the holy blank moment uh when that when that tech or tweet came through how scared were you personally for for your own health oh yeah i mean i was i was pretty scared i know um so our jazz writer, Tony Jones, who covers them for The Athletic, he was at the game Saturday. And I talked to him for a long time after the game. And wow. I, I would imagine that he talked to uh, Rudy Gobert that night. And I know that Tony's test came back negative. Again, it could take two weeks to show symptoms. So um, I was nervous up until learning what happened with Tony. And then I, a little more at ease once I found out his test was negative and then you find out Christian Wood has it, and then I remembered I had a one-on-one -on -one with Christian on Saturday. So, like, the nerves and anxiety kind of settled in again. But, um, yeah, no symptoms so far. The the sun coming out today helps. When it's a little more gloomy, you think about those things more. But when it's sunny, you can kind of ignore those feelings for a little bit. Absolutely. And I, I was thinking the same thing just from a different perspective, not being as close. I had the option of going to some of these games in the last week and for different reasons within family. I didn't, uh, so hearing that you were so close to them and you feel confident, I know there are people out there that, that don't know how to feel um, and that basketball is so secondary to all of this, but in covering the game like you do so closely and knowing that it is your professional livelihood, do you think we're going to have an NBA season in the next coming months? Do you think they'll finish this thing out? It's a great question. My gut tells me that with kind of how the calendar goes and the, the NBA season travel, the draft, free agency, all that stuff, it's going to be kind of, it would be very, very difficult to pull off an extended season, which would include the regular season. What I think could happen, I have no sources on this, this is just my gut, that what they'll do is they'll end, they'll cancel the regular season and begin the playoffs when they would normally begin. Um, again, that all is kind of predicated on the status of the country, yeah. um, how everybody's health, this virus, um, obviously owners would have to agree on that. Um, but th to me, that makes the most sense in, turn of, in terms of the calendar and the timeline um, if you put next season into perspective and the offseason and things like that. You've been around Blake Griffin a lot in the last uh, couple of years. To see him donate $100,000 to help the uh, arena workers didn't surprise me because he's that cool of a dude. Uh, you've gotten to know him and covering him so well. What did you think of, of that act? Yeah, I wasn't one bit surprised. It was for me, it was kind of just waiting to see that news break um, and see or learn that that would happen. And uh, when I learned that that would happen, I was not one bit surprised. People see Blake as a competitive guy, um, a very intense guy on the basketball court, but away from it, he's very, in I mean, even on the basketball court, he's very intelligent. Off the court, he's very intelligent. He's um, He comes from Oklahoma. He's a, he's a family man. He's Midwestern. So, like, he understands those values. He comes from a a background where I believe both his parents were teachers. Um, he understands the, kind of the human aspect of all this and being able to push basketball aside. So that didn't surprise me one bit. Uh, Blake has been nothing but a stand-up character uh, since I've got to know him in Detroit. 
He's a great dude. So are you. Be well, James, and thanks for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. Stay safe out there, Brad. All right, man.